So here, 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 right? The truth about the Israelites, the ancient, we say Israelites and the Hebrews in what's called Kemet or the Hetkapita or uh, Gibbets or Egypt, Hekapita, Egypta, Egypta, Hekapita, right? In ancient Egypt, especially around the time of the Exodus, right? The Exodus particular narrative, right? First and foremost, see that the Israelites, right? The children of Israel, right? The children of Israel, they were influences, right? We were influences in ancient Mitzrayim, in ancient Mizrahi, especially at the time of the Exodus or where the book of Exodus, the Sefer Shemot, the book of the names, the Yetziat Mitzrayim, the coming out, the Exodus of Egypt begins. Now, first thing and foremost, unlike some of the other half right or even ain't right other camps that is still you know um not properly sorting you know the wasp white anglo-saxon protestant philosophies that have crept up amongst many ancient you know or ones that are seeking to connect with our heritage as beta israel right so many of the other ones will talk about egypt as though it was just all bad no the scripture proves that there was the good the bad and the ugly and also scripture proves that we're not to abhor, you know, the so-called Edomite, right? Or even the so-called Mitzri, the Mitzrayim. Why? In spite of the ugly and the bad that we experienced because of that influence, right? This is a perspective a lot of other ones don't touch on. But once you hear it here and you really start to study the scripture in context with it, Hebrew science, the Hebrew da'at, scientia means knowledge, or the Hebrew knowledge, according to the scripture, the children of Israel, the B'nai Yisrael, and the people. Now, the people of the children of Israel are distinct and different, and many ones and ones kind of miss this right here. This is where the Hebrew connection has to do with spirituality, right? Or, for lack of a better word, um, religious, you know, um, orientation. So the children, right, the B'nai, B'nai in the Hebrew is like the sons of, it's in the Hebrew construct state, the Banim is the sons, the B'nai Yisrael, right, the B'nai Yisrael, the sons of Israel, right, because of our brother, right, and we could even say from the perspective of this generation, what we pick up in the second book of Moshe, because of our, we call him uncle, <laughs> Ankh, Ankh, my Ankh El, right? Our Ankh El, you know, um, Yosef, Safnat Paneak, Pai Anki, right? Because of Yosef and Joseph, the Lord of the Sif, right? The Haish, right? The Ha Adon, the Aton, the Aten, right? Of the land, because of his influence right there, and then the beneficial results that we had. Because you have to remember that the Bene Yisrael, according to the scripture, were in um, Mitzrayim in Egypt, in the two Mitzahs, for roughly, what, about 430 or so years, yeah? Right? So we have to recognize we were there long enough to, first of all, experience their hospitality. They, we got to admit that right there. The scripture, even Hashem, right? Jehovah HaKadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, the Holy One, blessed be He. Even He reminds us, right? For we were what? We were strangers in his land. But that doesn't mean because we were strangers in his land and we're not to abhor him, treat him as ta'ab, ta'ab, like disgusting. It doesn't mean, right, that we are unequally yoked with him. <laughs> it's what some ones and ones, as they try to be committed and be Israelite and be this and that and the next thing. This is the same problem with the sons of Israel and what led to the sons of Israel losing that sacerdotal right, that right of offering that right of being the priests, as we have Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov, all of them were able to offer sacrifices. But here, right, when we get into um, the Sinai revelation, and even more so here as we're in the Sefer Wayikra, right, in the Sefer and he called concerning the handbook of the priests, Leviticus, we see there's a whole change. And this change is so great, it's seismic. But here's what we want to touch on firstly and foremostly, what led to say Exodus chapter 32, where after giving their word and covenant, the sons of Israel, so quickly they went back, right, to the vomit that they should have already, you know, chucked up and out back in Egypt. They already came into the covenant. They came into the covenant, right, with Jehovah. They said that all that Jehovah says, 
right? We will do and we will obey. Then after 28 days of a lunar month, 30 days of a solar month, they, they were tried for 10 days. It got to 40 days. You know what I mean? And 40 nights, they didn't see Moshe. They got bummy. They went to Aharon. Now, notice in the scene where they went to Aharon. All right? They got some pictures. You've probably seen some of the jewelers and ones doing different jewelry. Right? And this whole connection with um, the trades and skills and even metallurgy. Metallurgy is also very, very important, at least in the context of, say, Aharon, Aaron, and no doubt maybe others of the tribe of Judah. Because when it's time to build the sanctuary, ones and ones in the camp has those skills. I mean, even Aaron had the skills to turn, you know, the, the gold or whatever that the sons of Israel had given for their idols, idolatry, or really for their cometic worship. The principle here is you can take the Israelite right out of Egypt, out of Kemen, but it was not so easy to take the Kemetic out of the Israelite because we were there so long, right? But while we was there so long, we had an influence. And this is what that new Sutin Bat, Sutin Bet, you know, that new um, Paro'o, Right, the great house. Now, the great house, the Pharaoh designation, though often is seen like in, in the sense, in the translation, like it's a man, like Pharaoh. Well, Paro, Pharaoh, right, Pharaon actually means the great house. So, what we have, even like in America and different countries, you know, they have different administrations over in the upper Egypt, you know, like in UK or England, the metaphoric of today, the prophetic of today, or here in the Americas, you know, you have the Democrat, Republican, you know, you got the conservative, the Labour Party, and usually when a different party comes in, it's a whole change, it's like a whole change of things, right? Sometimes under the old party, things were better, you know, under the old dynasty, that's what we have in Egypt, the rise of a new dynasty. Basically, we can call it like the 18th, right, dynasty, right? So the sons of Israel concerning like the Joseph's time, right? The Joseph and even portion of, um, right? Um, well, we could go back to Abraham, because we're going to actually start to compare and contrast. Now, people will say, well, how come if this happened, right? How come there's not a testimony, right, of this on the wall paintings in Egypt? You mean, how come the Egyptians do not talk about their failure and our success. I mean, but who does that? Especially in the ancient world. I mean, this is obvious. We can show you a case example where it's been pretty much historically proven that the Egyptians had lost right to the Hittites, you know, like even in that battle of Kadesh, and then I think it was Ramses, right? He basically made, you know, this big monument and everything like that, you know, for his people back home to basically say he was a success. We see this go on today, even among many governments, you know, of this earth today, among the Gentiles. But now, of course, we have World Wide Web, we have the Internet, so to speak, you know, social media, you know, different means of communication to communicate in real time, right? So people will get the truth that even if you're propagating to your people. Back in the ancient time, there was no way for the people back home in Mitzrayim to know that, I think it was Ramses, right? One of the Ramses, right? That basically he had lost at the Battle of Kadesh, right? Against the Hittites. And then part of the treaty was that he would marry, he married one of the daughters of the king or something. You know, they would marry. The, Solomon did the same thing where he made affinity with Pharaoh. Basically, he married his daughter, you know, and therefore this now kind of brought like a kind of a truce, a kind of a peace, so forth and so on, right? Brought them into like a transactional kind of relationship, you know, we could say like allies, so to speak, because of these kind of royal kind of marriages. So these marriages were basically transactional marriages. Now, we know what happened with Solomon, you know, when he kind of gave in. He, he, he did that not just with, with Paro, Pharaoh, and the Mitzrayim, Egyptian, but he did this with many other nations, right? And with all these nations, you know, this led to great failure. But the good news is that first was the Queen of the South, right? As Romain or Yeshua says, first was the Queen of the South or the Queen of Sheba, right? And note this right here, that was the only relationship with a non-Israelite, so to speak, woman, Right, that had good fruit that we know, and that's the truth of that matter. But here, 
and speaking about the sons of Israel being influencers. Let's just show you this verse right here. This is going to be like a little short one right here, just to touch on certain subject matters right here. Let's go over here and let's see if we can come out of this one right here, right? And let's see if we back this up right here. Let's get out of the, okay, here we go right here. So it says that the people, right? Let's just set this up right here. The people, my the people of the children of Israel, right? The people, right? And children, right? Here we go. Children and then Israel, right? The people of the children of Israel, right? There we go right there. And he said to his people. So, th so here in Exodus, right? In Shemot, the book of the names, Yetziat Mitzrayi, in the Orit, Zetzaat, Yetziat, right? The Exodus, right? He said to his people, right? Behold, the people of the children of Israel. Now, see, most people gloss over this. They think it's just poetry. No, these are tales here Hebraically, according to the Hebrew science and the spirit of the word. Not the letter of it, but the spirit of it. Behold, the people, right? The who? The arm, right? The arm of the arm of the Bene, right? The Ben, right? Ben in the singular Bene, the sons of Yisrael, right? The sons of Israel. So when it speaks of Israel as like the men, the woman, and children, use the key phrase in the Hebrew is Bait Yisrael, the Beta, Beta Israel, right? When speaking of the men, woman, and children. But in the direct sense of the responsibility, the responsible one was well, the fathers and the sons. Right, the fathers and the sons. That's why he will visit the iniquity, right, of the fathers upon the sons. Translator says the children, but the sons of the third and the fourth generation. So here it says, Behold, the people of the Bene Yisrael. So the people are those who have been influenced by the ways and the practices, right, of the sons of Israel. Right, we could say in their religious or spiritual orientation of the Aperiu. Right, the Aperiu. So we have the Aperiu in ancient the Metuneta. Some say the Hyksos. They they offer these different names, but the closest, and the one that has to do with how the Bene Yisrael were known. Some of the occupation is the Aperiu, right? The Aperiu. Now there's some similar words that refer to certain type of trades and vocations, even the working in metals and jewelry. Right. This is what we did. So even in ancient Egypt, we had the talents and the skills and also used it, you know, to make a lot of the different things for business. You know, like people want to get some statue or some piece of gold or jewelry. We we know how to do that. Right. What do you think today among certain Jews, they might, might know about jewelry or diamond business. So what they have learned is from Torah, the same thing, hopefully, that you're learning right here. That these are trades and skills. Note that when it talks about the tabernacle, when it talks about the priest garment, it's talking about all these gems, right? And this gem and that gem. So that means that they had these gems amongst them. <laughs> Another key thing is that when it says that the Israelite borrowed and the Egyptians lent, that's a mistranslation from the Hebrew. It's that the Israelites asked, right? And the Egyptian, the Mitzrayim gave because they were willing to get us out of there. You know, what happens is like, for example, I needed some place to stay and you caused me to stay in your house and you was very good to me. You know, I uh, stayed in your house and I tried to do things, you know, to show my gratefulness. I ran to the store for you, whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? And you would show your appreciativeness, to, you know, for that. But then after a while, you began to like, you know, diss me or maybe it wasn't even you. Maybe it was your children. Right? I know that's like I was in your house for a long time, but let's say I'm on your land or whatever. But the relationship turns back. So I do remember the, the good times that we had, but now things, the relationship is, you know, I, I need to get out of here. I, I, I need to go. Right. And this is what the sons of Israel were doing from the very get. People misinterpret this. Oh, the children of Israel and the God of the Israelites was against black people and African people. This is the Exodus is against Africa. Stop your stupidness. Because there was no such thing as African people, right, in the ancient time before the Berlin Conference. <laughs> in truth, go, go look it up for yourself. 
if you talk about any African people, you're talking about Tunisians and some Libyans back in Roman times, because that's when this terminology was first ascribed to any part or portion of the continent. So in ancient times, it wasn't talking about that. All of the peoples, like majority-wise, were one melanated form or another. I mean, and we learned this even from some of the modern DNA scholarship. In fact, some of the scholarship talking about the origin of white people, they're being more moderate in their estimations because of, no doubt, you know, the scientific um, research and ability to verify things, basically prove something, and maybe even some of the nations, right, are truly coming into the context of what the prophets have talked about. You know what I mean? More willing to recognize that they inherited the lies, right? So now, here in ancient Egypt right here, just to sum up this point about the ancient Israelites were influencers. So I'm in your house and um, now things are turning bad, right? And so I say to you, you know what? I'm going to get up. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave, right? No, but it didn't even begin like that with the Israelites. The Israelites said, you know what? We're going to worship. Give us a couple of days and we're going to go to worship and we'll be right back. Right, a couple of days off to go, like a religious holiday, a, you know, a, a sabbatical, and that's where the whole problem occurred right there. So it makes us ask the question about religious freedom at this particular time in Egypt. Even the ancient Egyptians, Matheno, Matheno, and different ones who have written certain things that are referenced by some of the scholars as being somewhat referential, if not verifiable. It talks about different periods of time in ancient Egypt, in ancient Mitzrayim, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Sometimes they even speak about each other, you know, about different reigns, different dynasties, so forth and so on. Sometimes they sought to improve on what some of their ancestors did. So there's the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? But at this particular point, we first ask for worship. You know, when we say worship, we ask to go and to worship our our nature, our net, you know, our Elohim, our power, our source, our God, right? And we was told basically no, right? We was told, well, why don't you do it here in Egypt? See, we had enough respect, or at least enough recognition that the way we worship, the animals that we would offer, it's like me being in India, right? And I'm around all these Hindus, and the Hindus are zealous worshipers, you know, of the cow or the cow is looked at to be sacred to them in their faith. And I'm in India and I'm saying, well, let me just go over here into uh, Pakistan or let me go just over here across the border, you know, for a moment into the desert, right, to offer sacrifice to my, you know, my Elohim, my power, my source, right? And they're saying, no, why don't you just offer it here? It's like you want us to get killed. You want us to sacrifice a cow amongst those who worship a cow and we're in their land. That's what was happening in the narrative. See, these liars, these pseudo-teachers, they never go into those points, right? And therefore, they try to make believe the Bible is a liar when they're really the liars right there. So here in this verse in Exodus 1 and 9, it says, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we, are more and our influence... Right? That means those people were people who might consider themselves or consider themselves somewhat Hebrews. Because Hebrew means to cross over. In a literal sense, it's one who crossed over from one side to the next. In the psycho-spiritual or what ones would call the religious or theological sense, it means one who has crossed over from these other ways right, into the way of our patriarchs or our we could say trinity right the hebrew trinity the faith of abraham yitzhak and yaakov and the elohim the power of abraham yitzhak and yaakov we can even show you in the exodus narrative where it points out that some of the egyptians mm -hmm, had according to the translator a respect for jehovah you see the other nations the other peoples were here big great mighty peoples for a long time the ancient Egyptians were a kingdom, were a civilization from a long time. The ancient Sumerians, the ancient Babylonians, all these ancient nations. And the Israelites were, in a kind of pseudonymous sense, were like the new kids. But fire bun, the whole kid, a kid is a goat. But I guess they would say we were stubborn about our way like that, right? In truth, in righteousness, right? But we were the new children. We were the youths. 
we run all these elder ancient nations like the ancient Egyptians. They were ancient, right? They were ancient nations to who we were, right? We were the newest ones, right? And we were saying that, well, the Almighty has revealed these things to us and had this relation with our patriarchs. Some people could accept it. Even some Canaanites in the early days, they accepted it. They were confederate with, with Abram, Abram Ha-Ibri, Ha-Ibri, right? Some say that there's no H on Hebrew. You're a liar because you don't speak Hebrew. So you should stop lying and learn Hebrew. It's Ha-Ibri. The first place we have it mentioned is Ha with a definite article that has an H. Ha-Ibri, Abram Ha-Ibri, the Hebrew, and he was confederate with Mamre and with uh, um, um, Eshkol, uh, you know, the different ones that in Genesis. So some of them also ascribe to it, right? But the great majority, there's always a remnant, right? right? We have Rahab. Remember Rahab, the harlot, the Canaanitish harlot? She comes into even our lineage and even the lineage of Moshiach, right? So there's always an exception to the rule. But the exception just proves the rule, right? So there was all these ancient nations and then the Israelites are coming along, right? We're the new kids on the block, so to speak. You know, you know the, the new people, even the newest nation. We're the young nation. And here's the contradiction I find amongst a lot of folks, right, that just want to hate on Israel. And many of them are Israelites, so they kind of have this self-hatred. They would talk about how the older folks, right, the elders need to listen to the youths, right? I remember Jacob said, by my bow, he had gotten that land by his bow. They need to listen, right? The older ones need to listen to the youths. The youths know what happened. The youths are going to make better and make good on what the elders didn't make good on. Isn't that what we always told, right? Like by the youths, even when we were young, we thought like the older folks, you know, we were looking at all their mistakes and everything else, you know, and felt that we we're going to do better than them, right? Some of us took their examples, their wise sayings. Some of us didn't have to bump up our head, hurt ourselves. And then we said, oh man, now I understand when we got to be older people, you know, and went through our own experience. And then now we getting to be those of us who were able to survive and live past some of those earlier years and get into, you know, our, you know, more mature years, maturity, get a little gray here and there, we have the youth saying, old oh, man, old oh, woman. <laughs> but that's what was happening with the children of Israel. Think on a certain level. The children of Israel to these ancient nations were saying, you old man, you old woman, right? And yeah, maybe back in the days you knew Jah, Jehovah, but y'all went far astray from it. That's on the theological level. See, there's the whole theological level. So if one's asked, well, how come we don't find in ancient Egypt what we have in Ha Torah? Because when the hunter is the one who writes the books, then the hunter is always going to be the hero. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? See, the thing about the scripture that shows you that the Bible is reality is that you have the good, the bad, and the ugly, right? That's a reflection of the chaotic reality that we have brought on ourselves according to the Hebrew science and narrative, right? We wanted to get the knowledge, the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. So we created this chaotic reality from the ideal, right, or the pristine or the first, the original, that Edenic, that Edenic. Everybody want to know about, well, where's the Garden of Eden, right? The Bible says the Garden was east within Eden. Why don't you first figure out where was Eden? Where was the, the, the delights? Where was the, the delightsome land? The Tob land? The Kui land? Right? So, anyway, wait here, 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 brothers and sisters. We're going to just get out of this. This was just a point on the fact that the, the, the Hebrews and the Israelites, right, were influencers, right? And it was our religious influence, right, that started to adversely affect the priesthoods right, of Egypt. And the priesthoods were very much connected with the royal, you know, the, the, the nobility and the royalty, right? And this is why we have this new king, right? This, this new king that does not know Joseph. Of course he knows of Joseph, but in a religious sense, right, that even connotates to how the Egyptians saw, knowledge is have an intimacy. Right? Like when the Almighty says, know me, know me, you know, to, to know I and he who knows I, right? And know what pleases me. 
So in the knowing of Joseph, because Joseph, our brother Joseph, Safnat Paanki, Paneank, right? He was virtually a god as Moshe became even to Paro. He was a god to Pharaoh. Right? To also show the differences in our religious orientation that although Moses was a god to Pharaoh, although Joseph was a god to the Egyptians in that time, he was still our brother. <laughs> Moses still our brother, right? Our lawgiver, our, you know, Robeno, our master, our teacher, but he's still our brother. That's why it says in the scripture that how can you love God who, who you haven't seen and you hate your brother who you have seen? Because in our reality, we was bringing out the old truths that the priests in the other systems, these ancient systems that have been around for thousands of years, had corrupted themselves. And I dare say this, um, there's that one um, Professor Reggie, as he's called. He had something that he was reasoning on some years ago, and he basically was talking about how the Amen priesthood of ancient Egypt had messed things up. And he was even saying that they, would, they did worse to ancient Egypt than, than what people believe the Hebrews did. Right? I thought that was a very interesting perspective, because from our own study of ancient Egypt, we get to see that when we start to look at fundamental principles, they are universally shared. But as people started to carve out names for themselves and become their own distinctive people, and as things, you know, like went on, like for example, do you think that the church today, Christianity today, right, is better than say the church or the Christians, the Nazarenes in the first century? Who do you think was closer to the truth and was reflecting more of the truth? So in that same sense, Right? As things went on, this is why ancient Egypt in the New Testament sense is a likeness for the times of the Gentiles, particularly vis-a-vis -vis their um, church and state system. Right? We'll get into a little bit of that a little bit more as we move on. But here, 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 my brothers and sisters, just sharing some of the basics right here. Let's seal up on this point that we brought forward right here. So here, here is speaking to the influence my the influence let's go on right here the influence and he says come on let us deal wisely with them notice what he says let us deal what wisely hakam 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 let's deal hakam like hokma wise right with them it's interesting because the son of queen of sheba and king solomon right ibn hakim the son of the wise ben hakim right by Nalechem, lest they multiply, lest they increase, let's kill them before they grow. You see their influence now? It's like us, I liken the, the children of Israel and the Hebrews even to I and I, Rastafari, Rastafari, my ethnic Rastafari is the Israelites, or what Babylon feel like, right? That for our small numerical number, right, and our lack of everything that big nations have, right? Our influence, I even liken it to even Jamaica or the Benjamites. Jamaica is a small island, but the influence of the Benjamites and Jamaicans are like five times, like it says about Benjamin in Torah. This is why those Negro tribes on the 12 tribes chart is right and accurate. Let's just move on, right? And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, so notice what time we're living within a time of war, right? Martial law and national security. They join also to our enemies. Why would we join to the enemies? See, people were enemies in the ancient world because of their theological view and how their theological view informed their worldview. Because to be a faithful worshiper of whatever God or deity means that there were things that you had to carry out, especially as those who ruled with the pleasure or privilege of their God, they had to carry out things, right, in the real world according to precepts of their particular deities or divinities, since most of the kings and rulers were kind of proxies, right, or substitutes in that sense for the particular divinity or deity. That's one reason why even in Hebrew there's a close association with Malaak, angel, right, or representative, messenger, angel, and Melech, and Melech, king or ruler. So here they're saying that there might fall out a war 
That's so why we say that the time of Joseph to the time of the Exodus is between the 12th dynasty, right, to the 18th dynasty. And anybody who knows ancient Egypt know that after the 12th dynasty, it's kind of murky. Even from the Egyptian point of view, it's almost like there's this big confusion that goes on where these other dynasties are not fully represented. So there was this war. Some say it was the Hyksos. We say more than likely it was our brother, Asal. It was the Edomites and, and, and their mixed people, right? They join also to our enemies. That's what they're talking about because they recognize that at this particular time in ancient Egypt, they had just overcome the Hyksos, the Hyksos. And we know that the Hyksos, the Hyksos, also are related to people who are considered to be Hebrew or Hebrew-like people, namely our brother Esau, who married into the Canaanites and the Ishmaelites. And remember that Ishmael also is linked with our ancestor Abraham and his mother Hagar got him a wife out of Mitzrayim. Check so you can see the link and connection. So now this new indigenous this is like, like an indigenous. It's like the native people are saying, listen, we had all these foreigners come in and take over our thing. Now we need to return it back. It's like what Trump tried to do. <laughs> Just to point it out, it's like what Trump tried to do. You know, that's where he was coming from, right? They join also to our enemies and fight against us. So get them up out of the land. Right? So here is where you have a bipolar situation among Paro, among the great house and the representative, the Sutanet, the Sutanbet, that like the king, right? The, the the ruling individual. It's like when they say the White House says, and the White House is gonna reveal the White House, like the White House doesn't talk, right? So the white walls of ancient Egypt didn't talk, but that was to say Paro, right? In where they ruled from. So he's saying to get us out of their land. Right? Get us out of the land. Then it says in the next verse, therefore they did set over them taskmasters. Now the interesting thing about this word taskmasters, is it is it this word right here? Okay, there's a taskmaster that now links when the Kushites came in from the south because it has a term no gaze. Now you're familiar with no gaze in the term of negus touch on that to afflict them with their burdens and they built for paro treasure cities pitom and rameses now some people think well this is at the time of ramses that's some foolish gentile white anglo-saxon protestant they didn't know much about egypt anyway they were guessing that's before they found king tut and everything else like that you know what i mean but rameses is a is a name that precedes even the great ramses Right? Remember, this is the 18th dynasty at this particular time of the Exodus. But they, the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. That means the more they afflicted us, the more we had more children and also had more other people who came under our Hebraic influence. Even though a lot of our Hebraicism was mixed down and related to Kemeticism. See, the, the purge is going on in the wilderness that's why we keep getting these incidences in the wilderness because you could take the Israelite out of Kemet, but it was hard to take the Kemet out of, you know, because they had Kemetic Stockholm Syndrome, so to speak. But the more they multiplied, right, the more they were afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And they were grieved before the B'nai Yisrael. And the Mitzrayim made the sons of Israel. Notice, it didn't say they made the people of the children of Israel, but it made the people, it made the, the children, the B'nai, right, the Ben, B'nai, made the B'nai Yisrael to serve with rigor. You see this word, Perek, Perek, right, or in its other pointing is Ferek. This is where we get the Latter-day term Africa from. Czech, right, Africa. Right? It's what they did with the continent of Tobia when they, 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 they fragmented, they broke it apart into all these artificial um, um, nation states. You know, when they drew, you know, all these artificial borders, they ferrek, a ferrek, a ferrek, a ferrek, right? They broke it apart. So when it says with rigor, right, to break apart, to fracture severely. So not only did we still serve, do a boda. We worked, we served, you know, 
even some of our people served in the religious sense. They they even dabbled a little bit with the comedic stuff. Remember all these things we did while in ancient Egypt. So for us, it didn't say like, oh, we have amnesia, right? But because we did it there, don't mean that we have to do it here or as we move forward. So it says, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage, right? And the word bondage is aboda. Aboda is the same word that's used for the service of the priest in the sanctuary. It's the same word that's used for the service, right? Our religious or spiritual worship is aboda. So aboda can have its it's like natural, like work, like you working for somebody, or it can have that like the service, like this is divine liturgy, right? The kadish, you know, the the kadasi, right? But the key thing is when it says says hard. We're gonna get to it right here and 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 get and get through this right here. Here it says. Um, in mortar, right? In bondage, in mortar, in work, in labor, in mortar, like the labor, labor day, you know? And in brick, and in all manner of service, all manner of aboda. So that means there's one, different kinds of aboda. There's aboda, like one could be a carpenter. There's aboda, like one could work in the field. There's aboda, like the priests work in the temple, you know? But in this case, in all manner, right, of service in the field. But I thought they want us out of the land. They didn't just say, y'all have to get out. No. They said, let's get some service from them. They wanted to rob us, actually. Right? All their service wherein they made them serve with rigor. So you see the two words? We have these two words. Abad, which is the root of aboda, And then we have perek or ferek. Right? So that means it wasn't just service, but it was cruel service, hard service. Like you could work for somebody and you could work for them, but then they also can, you know, make it in a cruel, rigorous, make it very hard, right? And then, you know, the rest, or we can go into the rest at another time where it speaks about the king, the Melech, or Mitzrayim, we call him often the Molech, right? Because here we have infanticide, right? Killing our youths, and in particular, killing our sons. It's like that book that's called about um, the destruction Right, the conspiracy. Right, what was that right here? Okay, we could probably end off on this right here. Yeah, because we just had got this the other day. Let's see if we still find this right here. The conspiracy, right, to destroy black boys. Right, there was a conspiracy to destroy black boys. Well, not just black boys, because the Egyptians also could be considered to be black people, but to destroy the Israelites. Right, why? Because we were influencers. Because our influence was adversely affecting their influence. Because you have to remember that ancient Egypt was very influential, even on the Levant, on the Canaanites, even some of their influence had went as far as Sumer. You know, it went into different parts of the world. They had strong influence. Because once you get them, like in your religion, in your faith, you know what I mean? We know what happened with the white man using Christianity. Once he was able to get them, you know, in that, Right? He had influence over other areas, especially the nine areas of people activity. Right? This is why Torah is important. But let's get this picture right here. I want to get out of this for a moment. I mean, just to move on to another part. This part, once you recognize that the Israelites right, were influencers, right? let's see right here. And at this particular point, let's see, the destruction of the black boys and girls. You can actually, if you look at some of this, if you can see some of it, it's actually things that we want to touch on, right, in its own, um, <laughs> right, so it's kind of a sneak peek to some of the stills that we might use. There we go, right there. Boom. Right? Countering the conspiracy, right, to destroy Israelite male child, male child, male children, or boys. My right? volume two, my right? volume three. But let me show you this right here. This right here, we can say in our history and narrative is a earlier case. And although we see it now with so-called white people, European people, right? We saw it here with people who were more our color because this whole racism thing is something white people made up in the 17th century. Right? Some white people did. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which the name of one was Shifra and the name of the other was Puah. 
right? And basically to put it here, and he said, when you do the office of the midwife to the Hebrew woman, see, right, and see them upon the stools, if it be a son, then y'all shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. This never happened to the Israelites in their previous time in Egypt. So, yeah, we were strangers in their land. Uh-huh. But do you treat strangers like this? Right? Unless you seek to destroy right, this people. And it says, um, don't curse no man right, who Jah has blessed. Yes, I. So here we're going to say less. So anyway, brothers and sisters, the Israelites were influencers in ancient Egypt, and that's what started it out, our influence. It's like even today, you know, the influence of black people, you got to think about it. You know, even coming from the Judahs over here, you know, the lion of the tribe of Judah and the Judahites in this north country, our influence, right, as black people in the West is probably one of our strongest features, though we may not have our own nation, our own country, our own army, all of this like other nations do, that influence, right, is powerful. And this is why they seek to keep it in check. Mate.